Ross Mayer was on your right. Michael Derrickso was on your left. The team of Taylor Derrickso and Tumovich versus Grace Merriman DeCandio. Uh, it wasn't a great round for Grace Merriman DeCandio last oh, round. Oh, no. So we're going to see. <laughs> we got out the brooms. <laughs> we're going to see if they can redeem themselves. <laughs> DeCandio just a walked bit. up and was like, yeah, maybe if I was on the play and didn't miss my third land draw. I'm like, dude, get out of here. Yeah. No one wants to hear it, man. We watched it. <laughs> yeah. We watched we it. We watched you scoop it up on turn yeah. three. Get out. Ross is going to start things off with a Razor Ridge Thicket and a copy of Elvish Mystic. We'll see what Michael Derrickson was able to do. Both players did keep seven. This is the, hey, which one would you do here? Yeah. Hey, buddy. Friendo. Yeah. <laughs> Help me out. <laughs> what we got? We got Lightning Bolt. Okay. Good start. Yeah. That is interaction. It's about as interactive as this deck gets. Yeah. Doesn't have a ton of it. Does not have a ton of it. I'm taking a look at the Lightning Bolt. Counts four. Collective Brutality, two. The rest are creatures and weird ways of drawing and discarding cards. Yep. One card that I was very surprised uh, to find out was legitimately great in this Black Red Hollow One deck was uh, Flame Blade Adepts. You know, there were versions that played Vengevine uh, in the early, you know, versions of this Hollow One monstrosity. Mm -hmm. And it played Flame Blade, Ad Flame Blade Adept, but a lot of times you'd want to wait until turn two, turn three to cast it so you could get that extra creature trigger for Vengevine. But that ultimately resulted in you already playing a bunch of your looting effects and discard effects, and so it would be much less effective. In this version uh, that was popularized at the most recent Modern Pro Tour, uh, Flame Blade Adept is basically Delver of Secrets for the deck. If you play it on turn one, all of your dirtily stuff, your, your Faithless Lootings, your Burning Inquiries, they turn into an insane amount of damage on a creature that has evasion. Yeah, and it's it's kind of nonsense, honestly, because the other thing, too, about Flame Bit is it has Menace. Yeah. Which is just like, why does this card have Menace? Because it costs one mana. It <laughs> needs to be good. <laughs> That's one of the things I've, I've realized when playing against Flame Blade Adept, which is now joined the battlefield, is, you know, it actually just hanging out has Menace. It is a real problem to block a lot of the time. I want to say I kind of love the split on uh, Dursko's deck, the three Gurmag Angler, one Tasser, Golden Fang. Sometimes you don't want to have to delve away that one extra Flame Wake Phoenix or that one extra Bloodgast, and that one extra delve can sometimes make all the difference. The five power from Gurmag Angler, obviously a bigger deal, but sometimes if you draw two Gurmag Anglers, it's just one card too much. Mary was going to sacrifice Windswept Teeth, get himself a basic forest. He's going to fall down to 19. He's got a Nettle Sentinel on the battlefield. We're going to see where else he's going to where else he's going to go here. Excuse me. My guess, Elvish Arch Druid. He didn't play a great card on turn two or a mana producing card on turn two. Seems like his hand is full of uh, the big ones, the good ones, the cords, the cocos, Arch Druids, the Azuris. He's going to come across here for three with a Nettle Sentinel, and perhaps next turn will be the big turn for Ross Marion. But for now. We're going to head over to Michael Derrickson and see if this is his big turn. Let's see if he can discard 19 cards. Or, yeah. sorry, 18 <laughs> cards. Excuse me. <laughs> this isn't the greatest start from Black Red Hollow One. Like, obviously, you, you've seen the screenshots on Twitter, right? The nut draws of turn one Burning Inquiry. Play two to four Hollow Ones. Mm -hmm. Discard a Flame Wake Phoenix. Like, it doesn't happen that much. Come on. <laughs> but... Uh, those are the, the free wins that the deck gets over the course of the tournament. The rest of the time, you have to scrap it out. you got to make sure that you get maximum value out of uh, your Flame Blade Adept. you got to, you know, turn your Faithless Lootings into more valuable things. Um, you know, like, for example, I'm pretty sure he's going to try to find a way to pump this Flame Blade Adept and then bring back Flame Wake Phoenix because he pumps it up to four power. That would be the goal. Maybe time for a Goblin Lore? Yeah. Oh, oh no! Nope. Looks like collective brutality. Collective brutality. Gonna discard goblin lore. This is a nice one, especially if he hits. Ooh, which I think is going to quarter calling, quarter calling, collective company. You called it as far as Ross's hand is concerned. Those are some of the best cards in the deck. As there goes collective company. Yeah, quarter calling significantly worse when you don't have a bunch of elves in play. Uh, the nettle sentinel is not even untapping next turn, so he can't even quarter calling for one. Yeah. He's in a little bit of trouble here, actually. His hand, uh, losing the Elvish Archer was a huge deal. Let's see what Miriam has drawn here this turn. He'll play a Devoted Druid. That can certainly turn things around us. He'll come in here for two. Will Ross going to knock Derek so down to eight. So we head back over to Michael. And Michael will draw. I'm not going to second guess Ross playing Elves. Obviously, Dursko's at eight. 
there's a chance you kill him with normal damage. But I really want a Court of Calling for three to get another Elvish Arch Druid onto the battlefield. Mm -hmm. That way, the second Court of Calling can Court of Calling for three again, uh, getting Azuri, and then kill him that way. Now that he's attacked with Nettle Sentinel, it doesn't untap. Currently, he only has access to five mana, but that will gain infinite mana. So, yes. okay, I talked it out, and then I figured out what he's doing. <laughs> there, there you go. So he's going to make inf infinite mana next turn. Second quarter of is going to get a zero. He's going to kill him with a uh, Nettle Sentinel. He can, go, he can go for the W next turn. Yep, I'm stupid. That's all right. Don't listen to No, me. you figured it all out all at once. Oh, boy, yeah. another collective brutality. He's drawn <laughs> three interaction <laughs> spells as Michael Dirkso. Three six. Wow. You know, we did it. Still gonna so Ross has the option to kill off his devoted druid, doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. um, if your opponent is gonna play something like lightning helix to, to target it, you can choose to, quote unquote, untap it infinity times. You know, um, even though it's untapped already, just to put the counters on it so that they don't gain life. There's another well, there's another devoted druid. So, we're still doing it. I, now we only have one court of calling. But a Drawn Aziri Renegade is lights out. Drawn Clutch of Company is probably okay at least. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. There are some good draw steps here. As Ross has somehow worked himself through three of the six removal spells that Dirkso has access to. Again, remember, four bolts, two collective brutalities. Yeah, but they're not even just removal spells. The brutalities were also duresses. That's true. You know, taking away a Collective Company and a Court of Calling has kind of taken the, the wind out of the sails here, so to speak. Here is Tassiger. That'll enter the battlefield. And now Flame Wake Phoenix is going to come back. Here's an attack. Boom. So Derek's be building up a nice battlefield. Pass the turn back over to Marion. Big draw step here for Ross. All right, we got infinite mana. What else we got? Elvish Mystic, not good enough. Well, you still play Elvish Mystic, and we still quarter calling for three because uh, it'll untap the Nettle Sentinel, and we have the untap ability from the Devoted Druid. Mm-hmm. And then next turn, we can threaten an overrun with the Nettle Sentinel. Okay. Uh, you know, we'll have five mana. Infinite mana might be a smarter long-term play, but you are getting pressured pretty hardcore here uh, by the Tasker, Flame Blade, Adept, and Flame White Phoenix. Looks like we have an update here in our legacy match. Shannon Grace going to win game number one here over Joshua Taylor. Grixis Delver up a game here over Colorless Eldrazi. Yep. And you see that Matt Tumovich with his Green Legends deck won game number one over Brendan DeCandio and his white blue mid range deck. Yeah, Grixis Delver has a decent Colorless Eldrazi matchup. It's super close, but a single Tassiger, or not Tassiger, a single uh, Gurmag Angler or. A true name nemesis is kind of tough for Eldrazi to fight through until they hit like six mana for uh, the fatty bombaddy. An endless one? Endless, no. Endbringer? Endbringer, yeah. that's the one. Taking a look here. Uh, Ross is thinking really hard about this Court of Calling. He has a couple of options. Um, Azuri Renegade Leader is the obvious pick because you can overrun, but it's not quite lethal next turn. If he's only able to, actually it is technically lethal because the Devoted Druid will have... Um, get a little bit bigger. Get a little bit bigger and be able to untap an attack. So if Dursko attacks with all of his creatures and doesn't play a blocker, and it's not a lethal attack, uh, Ross might just steal this game after getting pummeled by those collective brutalities. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit interesting about what Ross can and cannot do here with this Court of Calling if he just wants to go towards Azuri or not. I'm thinking that just being able to, to generate six power, plus if he draws an untapped land for his turn, he can use that instead of tapping uh, like the Devoted Druid you know, or the Llanowar Elves and have one extra attacker. And they all have Trample. Flame Wake Phoenix has to attack. Uh, but the five toughness from Tasker will be the deciding factor. If Dursko attacks with Tasker, there's a very good chance he's going to die on the swing back. Well, it's time for Michael Dirkso to go into the tank in this very, very important game one against Ross Merriam and Team BCW. Of course, whoever wins this match will be, in will be in the elimination rounds a little bit later this evening. We will start to talk about those at the conclusion of this round. 
For now, however, Flame Lake Phoenix, well, it's got to attack, so here it comes. Yeah, I think that's a really heads-up play by Dursko. He knows the inner workings of the Elf deck. He knows Court of Calling can find Azuri. He needs to try to play defense. He's very unlikely to draw any more interaction for the rest of the game. He's already drawn half of them uh, out of his deck. He's got to find a way to kill Ross a different way. Couple Flame Blade add-ups. No. That's some defense. Ross is going to. Here we go. So Ross has obviously got a plan. Here's Quarter Calling. Trigger, untap. Nettle Sentinel. I have to imagine it's Azuri. Now, if Ross is able to uh, draw, you know, the third Court of Calling, a Collected Company, and two Vizier Remedies, or the Vizier Remedies itself, that'll allow him to generate infinite mana and overrun infinite times in the game on the spot. Now, the only question is, can he overrun infinite times right now or not? Because Devoted Druid in combination with Azuri, you know, the creature's going to get plus three, plus three. Then you can obviously untap some more because you've got some power and toughness to work with. You've got some it's toughness to work with. It's not infinite. Every it's, every it's overrun's three extra mana. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it, it is not infinite. I'm not sure how much Ross can actually do here. Uh, he knows because he's been playing this deck for a while, and he knows the math and all yeah, of Yeah, but stuff. even he had to tank for about 30 seconds earlier. It's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> then he figured it out, passed the turn. Now, as you mentioned, it does get very easy if, you know, Vizier or Kord shows up. I believe he's still playing the deck with only one Vizier. Yeah, that's generally how he likes to build his Elves deck in Modern. That's all you really need with, with Court of Calling as your mainstay tutor effect. Plus, I'll tell you, Vizier is horrible in multiples. That is true. I've played against plenty of Abzan Coco decks. Well. They're just, oh, that's it. Well, that's, that's game. That's game, game, game. Game, 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 game. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Oh, that was a nice pickup, Ross. Game, 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 game. There's the Vizier. Infinite mana, infinite overruns. Good night. That that might have been a that might have been a, a quarter calling top deck worth a few thousand dollars <laughs> by the end of the day. Everybody come and get you. There we go. Ross Miriam gonna win game number one here over Michael Derkso as Els with a timely top deck gonna take game number one over Black Red Hollo One. It's Hollow Fun. These players are going to get ready here for game number two. We will be taking a look at the sideboards in just a moment. But first, a couple messages from our sponsors. Back, Cedric Phillips, Todd Anderson here in the booth, getting ready for game number two between Michael Erickson and Ross Merriam. 
black, red, hollow one versus elves. Derek's so down a game. So we take a look at the three Leyland of the Voids, three Ancient Grudges, two Fatal Push, two Grim Lava Mancer, two Inter Explosives, two Lily on the Veil, and a Collective Brutality. Todd, there are some goodies there against elves. Oh, yeah, uh, a lot more interaction. Uh, cards like Flame Wake Phoenix, Blood Gas are not overly important uh, in this particular matchup. Those are for, for games and against opponents that are planning to take you to the end game. Uh, so I, I could see him boarding out all eight of those cards, even though it takes away a bit of his synergy, and, and replacing it with things like Fatal Push, Grim Lava Mancer, Injury Explosives, and even Liliana the Veil, and definitely the last Collective Brutality. For Ross Miriam, he's got three Path to Exile, three Lead the Stampede, two Nissa Voices Endicar, two Stony Silence, two Rest in Peace, an Eidolon of Rhetoric, a Kataki Wars Wage, and a Reclamation Sage. Important to note, Ross on the draw this game. Uh, you know what? No changes. Same 60? You know, maybe cut one or two things for the two rest in peace, but if if you expect those cards don't really do much, the only thing rest in peace would be stopping would be the delve creatures. And you may draw rest in peace, and it might not matter. They could just put a hollow one into play, or four, on the first two turns. Sure. And then you just die. I mean, a lot can happen when you're playing against black, red, hollow one. That's a thing, you know. Burning Inquiry can mess up your hand. Obviously, especially if Dirk yeah. has left them in. You can't predict that. You can't play around that. Nothing. So it's tough to say how to sideboard against them sometimes because they can't have an explosive start that you can't really do much about. Yeah, I mean, the whole point of Ross playing this Elves deck is to fight decks like Black Red Hollow One, to beat up on decks like Humans and Affinity, these linear decks that don't have a lot of interaction. You know, Elves might have been one of the best choices I've seen for this tournament just because 12 of the day two decks were those three decks where I think he has a good matchup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Can we get a 10-sided die? Oh, yes. This is the best part of my job. I can't believe I get paid to do this. Wait, you getting paid for this? <laughs> Why didn't he tell me? Ruin his hand, Dirkso. Show me the hollow ones. Oh, yeah. You know what? Par for the course, I'm just going to expect three hollow ones. Yes. It feels like the deck plays 100 hollow ones when this happens. Yeah. Never thought I would see the day where you needed a 10-sided die for your deck to function. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This, whole, this is nonsense. This pick and cards, you roll dice. Nah, I like it. This is faster. There go a couple heritage druids and a devoted druid. Show me some hollow ones. Show me some hollow fun. What? Boo! You know what? Good. <laughs> Boo! Good. You know, I, I've always thought that Magic Online was maybe a little bugged. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of trips and quads hollow one on the first turn. Screenshots from Magic Online. This is reality. This is not how you keep viewers, Todd. Where are the hollow ones, Todd? Look, that's not my fault. Everyone just... turned on something else now, Todd. And how is that my fault? I'm saying I'm trying to make it funny because his deck is really bad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Black Red Hollow One. It's my second favorite deck in modern behind uh, Five Color Humans. Buy them both on rcgames.com today. There you go. Well done. <laughs> Here's a Gurmag Angler. It's a pretty good start. Uh, push plus Gurmag yeah, on turn two. Slow Ross down yeah. and have a 5-5 five five on the battlefield. Yeah, and, you know, it made Ross discard uh, two of his uh, Heritage Druids and a Devoted Druid. So a lot of his, you know, unique mana generation uh, cards are just gone. Boreal Druid is the playoff of the Cavern of Souls, of course, wow. aiming Elf. Lame. And Ross did draw a copy of Path to Exile Lame. for the Kermak Angler. Timely. Yeah, you know. Timely draw. You know, he's a coward. Oh. He's, he just brings in Path to Exile because he's afraid of a 5-5. Five five. Yeah. Yeah. With your million tiny creatures, your Dwight in Elite deck. Come on. I think I'm with him on this one. Sure. I'm going to side with Ross. What do we got, a Goblin Lore? I bet on the play they in his deck. Come on. Ah, Matt Tumovich wins his match two games to zero very oh. quickly over Brendan DeCandio. So. <laughs> this is the decider. This is it right here. The George W. Bush of games. The decider? <laughs> Look, self-proclaimed decider. I didn't make up that nickname Fair for Fair enough. Him. You know. Here's a goblin lore. We are going to draw one, two, three. Let's make it four. Discard three at random. <laughs> what was Pat Chapin's nickname that he made up for himself? The Innovator. <laughs> yeah. That's his nickname. It sure is. That is. It sure is. One, two, and three. The Decider. 
What did we lose? We lost a Burning Inquiry, a Flame Lake Phoenix, and it looks like maybe a Tasker, the Golden Fang. We want hollow ones. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah, if he plays two hollow ones, that Path Exile is going to look kind of embarrassing. He's just going to wish he had more combo pieces and more random elves. Blackleaf Cliffs will be the land. And Ross says, let me see Flame Wake Phoenix real quick. Make Triggers sure I during can get the this. beginning combat step. Yep. Uh, he's going to path probably during uh, the first main phase still, so the trigger doesn't even go on the stack. Yep, I think that's the plan. Better keep that graveyard order correct. Side judge reading the card. <laughs> or teammate reading the card. I don't know. There we go. That's going to exile the Grimag Angler. And that means that Flame Lake Phoenix. All right. Path looking pretty good. Take it back. Okay. All you're right. on board now? Yeah. It's also one of his very few ways to beat an active Grim Lava Mancer, which would be a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, you know, you don't know if Ross knows that there's active Grim Lava Mancer or Grim Lava Mancer is coming from the sideboard, but it is good to kind of hedge a little bit here. And now there is Flame Blade Adept. So we're going to head back over to Ross, who's going to have access to three, potentially four mana next turn. Thanks to Boreal Druid. That's right. Man, it's been a long time since I've seen that card. Boreal. <laughs> Maybe Ooh. she's born with it. That's right. <laughs> it's Boreal. Elvish Arc Druid. Pass the turn back. Big turn coming from Arium next turn, I imagine. Usually is. If you get to untap with an Elvish Arch Druid, you're usually in good shape from the Elf side. Mostly because you can cast an Elf or two before you even activate the Arch Druid, and it, it kind of doubles your mana production for the turn. However, Lightning Bolt is going to slow that down. Horizon Canopy the draw. Yep. Fourth mana, though. Metal Sentinel. And no attacks. It'll be a Darwin's Elite instead. Yeah, just putting up some defenses. Um, he drew his fourth mana. I kind of thought maybe he just had Coco and he would just cast that. But maybe his hand is a little gummed up with uh, three drops and he's just trying to progress his, his board. This will be a, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. We're going to the streets, as Owen Turtenwald would say. <laughs> he hasn't found any copies of Hollow One. Yeah. He's already down two of his big Delvers. When Not you to be confused with Delvers of Secrets. When you hardcast Street Wraith, you're taking it to the streets. Here's taking an Azuri. I'll say this. If Ross draws a Cavern of Souls for his land, mm -hmm. he will not be able to activate Azuri. That is which true. Which is hilarious. That is true. In <laughs> his mostly green deck. Yeah. It'll be a touch awkward. Thanks, Boreal Druid. <laughs> Look, they're a team. He needed one more mana accelerant. I like it. A little snow mana never hurt anybody. Uh, hurt me pretty good. With the... Uh, Mouth of Ronom. Brought that one up the other day. Yeah, we can see that make its way into modern, maybe. Is it Into the North seeing some play in some Turbo Dex Depths deck because it gets Dark Depths out the deck? It was. I think they're past that in Legacy. Yeah, Stone Scrying, while it doesn't actually build up your mana base at all, being able to find the Thespian stage half of the combo is definitely reasonable. Yeah, I think that's pretty important. Draw a card. Uh, didn't want to just cast another 3 4? Didn't want to go to the streets again. Taking it to the street race. Grimag Angler. 3, 4, 5, 6. 7 mana for that angler, which means that he can get back Flame Wake Phoenix and actually start to do a little something here in the air, which is Dirkso's probably best, best avenue to victory. If everything yeah. else ain't looking so good right now. You know now. what would have been better than Path to Exile on turn 2? Hmm. Rest in peace. Maybe. Uh, maybe not. I think there was already a Gurmag Angler in play on Dirk's host turn, too. So. Oh, no, there was. There oh, was. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Let's go to Ross, who's got to lead the Stampede in hand. A couple of other options here, too. Ross is going to pass the turn back. Maybe he has access to Coco Record. Uh, I'm guessing, yeah, he's got one of those. <laughs> Either one of those uh, is probably going to put him at a, a hugely advantageous position as long as he hits two creatures off of Coco or is able to find uh, an Elvish Arch Druid to, you know, overrun with his Yuri, a quadrillion damage. Dirk's so going to consult with Joshua Taylor, who unfortunately lost his match to Tana Grace. Zero games to two. 
Pillar Seldrazi not able to keep up with Grixis Delver. However, the other teammate there, Matumovic, was able to get the job done over Brendan Candio, two games to zero. So it all comes down to Dirkso. And if he can get the job done here and tie things up against Miriam for a third and final one of this match and the Swiss rounds of this tournament. Unfortunately, even if uh, Dirkso wants to get aggressive here and start attacking with his uh, ground creatures, the secondary ability of Azuri is very good. Uh, you get to uh, put a regeneration shield on as many creatures as you have access to green mana. Uh, and, you know, you can block, and then before damage resolves, just regenerate everything. Burning Inquiries will be responded to here by Miriam. Yeah, I don't want to randomly discard that one, so I'm going to go ahead and cast it. We'll see what two creatures is able to put it on the battlefield from Collective Company. It'll be a Dire One's Elite and a Devoted Druid. Yeah, that should do it. Well, it's certainly getting tough. Well, Dursko can uh, get a little lucky off this Burning Inquiry and draw into some way to kill Aziri Renegade Leader. I think that's going to be necessary. As here come three cards for Ross, three cards for Michael. And, of course, we will shuffle, and each Amateurs. player will lose three. Both amateurs looking at the cards before they discard. Mm. You got to draw them dark. You got to discard them and be upset in the moment be about, angry. What, about what you discarded. Well, there go two copies of Lead the Stampede and a Windswept Heath, none of which I think Miriam needed. For Derek's go, he discarded at least one copy of Hollow One, but Hollow One's not even particularly good right now. Nope. Definitely just want some, some way to get Azuri off the table. Flame Lake Phoenix will come in. And Dirkso will play another Flame Lake Phoenix post-combat. Well, let's see if we're going to have to do some quick maths, you know. Is that Nyctos? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How much math do we need now? <laughs> Not very much. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's at least two overruns, so let's count out the power. We got one, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So we got 11 power in play. All the creatures are going to get at least plus 6, plus 6. I think so we that's might 42. Be. So that's 50 odd, 50 some odd damage, maybe more from the Devoted Druid. I didn't the, the one of Nick those here for Ross Merriam is going to do it. And that's going to send Ross, Tannen, and Brennan into the top eight. Yes, it will. Team BCW Woo. back into the elimination rounds.